Generation 7, Sun and Moon, the Alola region gets ripped into so much. But even if you hate Alola that much, you cannot deny the introduction of regional forms was probably one of the best additions to the series since the invention of running. Or Megas. Probably Megas. Of course these weapons are gonna adapt differently based on their environments. Of course Waylord's jumbo sized in a region that's a glorified swimming pool. Put Waylord in the ore region for a few millennium or two and you'd be winning him in a bag at funfairs. So it's a banger choice from the game freak to acknowledge this and see where they could take it. And now this is gonna be different from the Mega Evolution one. I can't just sit here and go through all 48 ranking them like, Man, this thing's puny. Who would ever use you? Diglett? Not a fair judgement with so many pre-evolutions involved here. Difficult to compare like I did with the Megas who are all tropicana up to the gills statistically. But I can just sit here and go, Diglett. My man. That's a dead trim. What are you do- Who would ever use you? This is probably the one regional form that gives me the ick. Now I know it's a personal bias, just like I have with Rhyperia. Could be insanely strong or useful for whatever reason, but I just don't rate him at all. Because it's not objectively a bad concept or even that bad of a design, I guess. But I can't shake off the vibe that Galarian Mr. Mime looks like a complete nonce. Every time I ran into one, felt like Shane Brannigan was gonna spawn and tear into him at any second. You're a hypno in disguise. You'll be seeing him pop up on Facebook Live any day now. Common misconception when I do these ranked videos. Just because it's not in the top 10 doesn't mean I think it's dead. So I don't hate this at all. Dead trim aside. But Diglett has to be low down here because... You know there's barely a change at all. It's unfair to judge properly being a pre-evolved form and just giving Diglett three strands of hair. I don't really know what you're gonna do with a design like Diglett's unless you finally make its prime Ronnie Coleman physique hidden away below the ground cannon. Maybe take it down the executive gene pool, make him the full pepper army, or turn him into a pickle. Now again, I get it. You might have even less creative leeway with purple goo. What can you really do with a form that looks like Ditto forgot how to transform back into itself? So what else are you really gonna do other than chuck a new texture onto Grimer? But I can accept this one being within the dead tier because what it goes on to become more than makes up for it. With Geodude and Graveler, these changes would have been fine if it didn't look like all you did was lob a bunch of fridge magnets at them. Graveler, yeah, I had some potential with the orange marks. Could have gone a bit more in that aspect. Make Graveler look less like an HM obstacle, more like a golden ore. I had the same issue with them as I did with Mega Aerodactyl's design. Don't even have to edit the colours this time. The shiny forms already exist. They really should have just been the standard here. There isn't much salvage in these two. It's kind of the point for the regional rats to be bottom tier mons. So being this low, you know what? Good job. Good job. Because they're really not meant to be appealing. And a new form isn't going to change that too much. But I've got to give them credit. They actually made a decent physical change to them, given what they had to work with. Mr. Rhyme does not offend me anywhere near as much as its soon-to-be house-arrested predecessor. I still get a bad gut instinct off him though, but maybe it's just canon that all ice psychic types have to make you feel uncomfortable in some form. But it pulls off the whole tap dancing gimmick way better than Mr. Mime. I was still not overly keen on it, but man, that cane in the tap dancing. Alright, fair enough, fair enough, you got me. You sold me a little bit. Galarian your mask isn't pulling off anything groundbreaking other than the way it evolves. Give him a little slap, but ah, ah, not too hard now, and then chuck him under a bridge. But until you get around to slapping and chucking, it's really just a variant of your mask. One of the weaker regional forms in that aspect, but purely because it's there to plant the seeds for the real banger. I really like Galarian Slowpoke. And I know if something I didn't care about had a form change this lazy, I'd probably rip into it a lot more. If, I don't know, for whatever reason, Game Freak were feeling that boring to go and give Volbeat a form, but the only difference was its receding hairline got filled in with a yellow felt tip, I'd probably grill him for it. But for Slowpoke, it gets the pass from me. If anything, just like Slowbros Mega, it's very on brand for Slowpoke to have the laziest reskin. Golem might be a bit goofy, but Alola brought us an extremely goofy golem. So I can appreciate this a lot more compared to what its young'uns look like. Might not be anyone's favourite, but at least it gets a bit more to stand out from the Kanto edition. I know people were expecting a molten rock golem form once Mega Evolutions piped up, which would have been a good shout here. And that idea...
you know, kind of makes what we ended up with a little bit underwhelming. But even then, I could still appreciate what they went for. Going outside the box is an electric type. That looks way more stupid. <laughs> When you're talking about any region's Route 1 locals, Zigzagoon is definitely in the upper bracket of those, in my opinion, and it's no different here. Both Zigzagoon and Lanoon are leagues above Rotata and Raticate and Kanto, Hoenn, Gala, any region, any form, doesn't matter. But again, no comparison here. These two look like they weren't designed to be animals you'd legally have to kill on site if you locked eyes with one. Forget peaked in school, Stantler peaked hundreds of years ago. For a Pokemon that apparently gets hunted down all the time for its antlers, you'd have thought the evolution would have stuck around with its psychic powers intact, at least to fold any hunter's weapons over like an old Tom and Jerry skip. No idea if a Stantler form is yet to be shown, but a new evolution alone is more than enough for something as forgotten as Stantler. The only exposure Stantler's gotten in the past 20 years is from Danny saying it was his favourite on an episode of Game Grumps like 8 years ago. Galarian Stunfisk is a prime Pokemon for Gala, the only known Pokemon that can use the move Snap Trap. So as always, you can always trust the UK region to have something that camouflages itself on the floor to mug you for your shoes with its own mouth. If you told me Gen 8 were gonna have its own Voltorb or Fungus Pokemon disguise, I never would have considered Stunfisk. That's an oddly creative design choice having it hide on the ground to lure you in, thinking someone's dropped a rare candy in the mud and Stunfisk makes a rare candy out of three of your fingers. Now Diglett stayed out of the limelight, kept himself low key underground with his dead trim, but it dug so Doug Trio could plow. No more dead trim for the lads. First time I saw this weapon, I thought, how's Diglett gonna evolve into this? Get him to level 26 in Castle Grayskull? I can see what kind of design choices I can be a sucker for. Giving him a fresh trim is definitely one of them. Making that Ronnie Coleman body cannon a Game Freak is definitely another. I cut so fresh, it might actually be worth weighing him down 10 points of speed. Making Doug Trio steel to convey that through a design, they easily could have just made him silver, which, you know, actually... A I probably not mind that either, but the hair is such a creative way to go about it. Whether you like it or hate it, doesn't matter. That's the thing. Gets a reaction off you either way. It really snuck up on me just how many forms the Slowpoke line has. Seven of yous. Seven. I thought Charizard was getting a bit greedy on the front line to get every form going. Slowbro arming itself with the S plus tier color of purple. And going down the Metroid route I see. Alright, alright fellow man of culture trying to sweeten me up. Trying to get in my good books here. And Galarian Slowking is just mad. Shelda biting the head about to evolve into Slowking but reveals its trap card. The Uno reverse card. Shoulder's getting the brain blast this time. Starting to run out of places for Shoulder to bite onto. I mean, hey, <laughs> any shoulders out there who've been in a rough drought? Hey, a long lockdown. No judgment from me. Hey, any you shoulders down bad enough? Hey, see what happens. Shoot your shot, you know? What that tongue do? At first, it seemed like an easy choice, a bit of a no brainer to me. A lowland Persian dead tier, straight away. Wouldn't even be seen with James, let alone being the bouncer to Giovanni's desk. Persian looking like he took the Mr. Krabs pill. But nah, this isn't dead at all. Stupid is way better than boring. And Persian is stupid. If you got an Alolan Persian that looked fit and trim with a bit of color grading to look a bit bluer, that would have gotten zero reactions. And Meowth. Meowth already had a bit of zest to him, but it's only because he gets mouthy and ends up getting a quick left for it. Without the anime, without the Hey look, it's the twipes. What am I, some kind of crooksy enemy? Without that whole gimmick, what else has it got going on? If you're going by games only, Meowth is tame. You're a money spawner. You're a coin farmer. But the Alolan form gives it a bit of physical charisma as opposed to just verbal. Just by its design alone, you can interpret in so many ways what its personality might be. To me, it's like Meowth had a sassy cousin who happens to run the most live club in the Alola region. Now I'm not gonna give Galarian Ponyta and Rapidash decent ratings just cause your man predicted them two years back. Cause I figured lore-wise with the UK, it makes sense, a unicorn-based Pokemon. Oh sir, excuse me, still waiting on that unicorn. This is actually the, uh, unique 
Horn Pokemon, implying the existence of the Normie Horn Pokemon. Now I love myself a good color palette, and here it goes in. And the Pokedex entries here for this pair go all over the spectrum as well. Ponyta goes from being able to heal you with its horn, to Rapidash's horn doing the exact opposite to thick sheets of metal. Ponyta also can read the contents of your heart, to detect if you're evil or not. Steers proper clear of mime then, you know that. I can't remember if two years ago I said it should have been a fire fairy type or not, but I'm saying it now, either way. Missed opportunity there. Alolan Raichu may outclass its Kanto self thanks to the Psychic type. Definitely one of the more sound regional forms. Maybe a rare case where I prefer the original more. But using your Psychic powers to surf on your own tail, it's kinda swaying me here, not gonna lie. You'd think it adapted this way from surfing in the Alola region, but apparently it's because of the food Alola has. Now I don't know what kind of scram they got going down in the Alola region, get that on Uber Eats this second. I don't wanna hear it, I don't care that it's down in Hawaii and I'm in Gala, pretty much. I'll be down the nearest hospital, and you just have your man Abra teleport it to me. No excuses. Now, I'm calm with the idea that you have to eat a ton of, like, chicken, for example, to build muscle, but man, sign me up for whatever pancakes give me psychic powers to mentally frozone myself everywhere. <laughs> We're like halfway deep into this, and I'm already on Sandslash. This really is a stacked set of forms. Look at this absolute unit. And not only Ice gets the Steel type and all. The fastest Pokemon in any icy terrain. Steel claws like that, and he's gliding up mountains like David Hasselhoff on the ocean. <laughs> I refuse to believe there's any humans out there cruel enough to deny an Alolan Vulpix. Another case of planting the seeds for the real banger still. But on a roster of forms and designs this well done, as strokeable as it may look, it's gotta be set down a fair few. Especially when it doesn't even get the fairy typing like it goes on to get as Ninetales. Even then, it's holding its own fairly well on this list given that it is still a pre-evolved form. Because it's far above the peasant pre-evolved evolutions like your grind you geodudes, far and above that crowd of jabronis, design clean as, yet doesn't overshadow the original all either. They're both great aesthetic counterparts to each other. Imagine getting mugged off this badly. You go through your whole life thinking you're pretty decent. You're a champion worthy combatant, so you're a pretty tough guy. Then you go off to Hawaii, and they're all like six foot ten meat factories. And you have man looking like Dwayne, still waiting for their growth spurt. And not only that, then the world's greatest minds band together to scientifically prove that you're a jabroni. Imagine that you're an executor. It had the brains, but got so much brawn, it just scrapped the brains off. About 29 feet worth of more brawn it seems. Oh natty baby! You better believe the gym boys aren't on those Cantonian eggs. Want real gains? You gotta be on those Alolan eggs. Might as well get that Alolan sunlight down you too while you're at it. Oh why are you going? Give me some of those psychic edibles too while you're at it. I already know this video is going to be outdated. It probably is going to be outdated by the time I finally drop it with the Hisuian his forms being revealed, but I can't ignore them here. The ones I'm aware of, at least. A kind of unexpected choice to get a form from Unova, but far from a confusing and lukewarm one, like Ordino being the only Gen 5 Mega. Not much is known, so I can't say too much. But really, anything to separate flying types from being the generic normal type is an upgrade to me. I'm not sure if it's just recency bias, but I'm really rating the design here. <laughs> far-fetched getting a regional form, it might as well just be a mega evolution. No comparison here. The only time you'd ever choose the Kanto far-fetched is in a Chinese takeaway. Just built different in the UK. Come over here long enough, leave us a fighting type. You come over here with your leak thinking you're a big man, soon enough you'll get slapped about and realize being normal isn't gonna get the job done. Gotta to adapt into a pure fighting type. Can't fly anymore either. Don't blame him with the dead weather we get over here, I'll be taking the car too. Now you know I have to include this. Not much known about him, but come on now. Look at this boy. Growlithe was looking trim enough as per. Doesn't matter what century it's in apparently. Seems to be based on these ancient lion statues in Japan. That's an elite concept to use. But if the look of these statues is any indication, I can't imagine what Arcanine is saying. <laughs> If Alolan Meowth runs the most live club in Alola, then you best believe Galarian Meowth and Berserker run the hardest local pub in Gala. After a hard day's graft, 14 hours down the mines, that's your spot. What's on the menu today, boys? Pints. Today's soup.
rum. The locals seshed crabs and grapple locks armed with four bevies at a time. And then you've got the Galarian Meowths who respect each other based on how hard the coins on their head are. That's what sets the social hierarchy between them. Completely caveman brains. And I'll tell you what. I like it. I'd sesh with this crowd. Gala's side of the Meow family is on my wavelength, you see. Hard to even comprehend that this is like a distant cousin of the two Persians. These two make the other Meow family look like complete Tories by comparison. Alolan Meow lives with royalty, and Gala Meow's just like, Oh yeah? How hard's your coin, though? Go on, show us your coin. Go on, give us a flick of your coin. <laughs> Again, I'm not just giving wheezing ratings because your man predicted that one two years back just like Rapidash as well. But I really could have asked for any more here. It gets more creative the longer you look at it. You got the chimneys from England's, you know, terrible air pollution. But oh wait, it's not just a chimney. You look down, oh, it's a top hat from England's chivalrous sense and fashion. And oh wait, they're those. They're not just fumes, are they? They're not just fumes, I'd recognize that's your man's bonnet right there. Don't know whether to go out for a pint with him or take a big pull from him and pass him around the room. Weezing would probably be down Berserker's local too. Be the old geezer who goes on about how Gala's not what it used to be, all these other regions coming over, taking our jobs down in the mines. You can tell exactly how offensive their opinions are based on how high the head of their pints are. <laughs> whole new evolution needed to salvage this one. Just factory reset it. But luckily for a Pokedex filler like Farfetch'd, it got both. Assuming you got yourself a Farfetch'd blessed with the Magnum Dong leak, you can just break the class barrier. You can evolve into a highborn sir, it seems. An evolution that's only achieved once his technique is good enough to land three critical hits in a row. I wonder if anyone's ever gotten that unlucky that they've just got a Gala Farfetch'd to level 100 and it still hasn't done it. I guess that's why few Farfetch'd Farfetch'd can even survive enough battles to get this far. Very few are worthy of being named a sir. All those years being hunted down, and now it's become the reason species like Kanto Farfetch'd go extinct in the first place. Sir Fetch'd is now the hunter. The blood of its enemies is merely a condiment for its leak, which is to be partially consumed later for combat sustenance. <laughs> A staple of the Gala region. The front man of the punk rock band live every week down Berserker's local pub. No amps required. Enough decibels in its voice alone to perform to a sold out Wembley Stadium apparently. Playing Pokemon Ruby back in 2003. If you'd shown me that the level 20 Lanoon I was currently double kicking with Combuskin would one day lead to this. Probably would have been one of my favourites straight away. Clearly more of a punk rock guy than glam metal anyway, obviously. At least I think so, cause cause damn that that shiny form's looking a bit wild. Obstagoon might be down Berserker's local, but that shiny form looks ready for a rave down a Lolan Meowth's club. <laughs> I had never even considered regional forms ever being an option for legendaries. I thought it was safe to assume that they're all a one and done, especially if you're talking about three well-established classic legendary designs, and not only that, making all three of them complete hits. Especially Moltres. Man, you are really pulling the grade average down there for the group. Looking like someone shoved fear on that oven and got bored halfway through. What I rate about the Galarian trio is that they all foil each other with their main type. Fighting to psychic to dark. A really solid set of types to see foiling each other. A lot more refreshing to see over your standard grass, water, fire types. <laughs> Who'd have ever thought Basculin wouldn't only get such a beefy upgrade, it'd be one of the staple mons in... Well, really any of the games to be honest. Back in the old days, Basculin evolves when it gets possessed by the deceased souls of other Basculin in its school. And you'd think for how easily Basculin gets tucked in for bed being as weak as it is, you'd have discovered this thing 10 minutes walking into the Unova region. <laughs> Darumaka and Darmanitan were top level choices for the Unova region. Bring them over to Gala, and there's no botches to be seen still. Top level design in any region it develops in, apparently. Who'd have thought a snowman would come along with some of the heaviest hands in the game? The Alpha Abominable Snowman. Crabominable wishes it could even step into the same ski lodge as Galarian Darmanitan. Crabominable couldn't even top up ice for Darmanitan's drinks, let alone go punch for punch with it, especially since it still has that Unova. Nova blood going through it with the Zen mode. The exclusive ice and fire dual typed Mon. Now would you really want to start a fight with a snowman willing to set itself on fire just to spark you out? That's a snowman with nothing to lose right there. <laughs> 
Alolan Ninetales is still the premier regional form if you're talking about Kanto's spiciest mammals. Maybe Hisui and Arcanine can dethrone, but we'll see about that. But for now, it's all about Ninetales getting one of the best shape-ups regional forms have handed out so far. Vulpix has a set of two decent looking counterparts to each other. When they both evolve, there's no competition. No chance you're going for that base form, surely. You ask me for something aesthetically pleasing to the eye out of any Pokemon, my go-to answer isn't going to be too short of Alolan Ninetales. <laughs> Your mask remains similar to its Unova counterpart, making for one of the more underwhelming regional variants, but all for a good reason. Because once slapped around 49 times or more, and once thrown under a bridge in the wild area, the real regional form of your mask spawns up. Because Rune Rigus is mad, like in the best way possible. How does this exist? You couldn't have gone much better than this creatively. You could have just done a peasant coffer Grigus form that's just a dirty plank of wood with arms. They go all out and give us a carved ancient painting that retains all of the horrific memories behind the picture carved into it. One touch, and those memories could be yours. No, I tell you, there's a lot of bored and awfully lonely people back in their ancient times, spending their days carving many many things into walls. Slot machines apparently would have made the old games 18 plus today. I'm sure there's plenty of ancient artwork and some of those ruined rigors roaming about. They'd get the 18 plus rating a lot quicker than a few slots. One of Alolan Ninetales Pokedex entries say, it won't forgive anyone who harms nature. Well, in that case, Ninetales and Alolan Muck would get along handily there, but only the Alolan ones. Any of the Kanto ones show up, then it's beef, it's on site. So Alolan Ninetales is a fox of superior taste because Alolan Muck is one of the top regional forms for sure. Grimer isn't attracting tourism to the Alola region anytime soon. Maybe the wide selection of Alolan sweets are the source of tourism because it's looking like Muck's gotten into a factory's worth of Starburst. When I ask about Grimer, what can you really do with a form that looks like a higher textured ditto? This right here, Alolan Muck is the answer. Not just a saturation change, a whole new color palette. It even adds on a few poisonous crystals of some sort. Gives it a little bit of flair compared to the original. And just as a bonus, getting the dark type makes it such a weapon. Insane upgrade from the original. Okay. Let me explain here. Done a lot of segments so far that include both Pokemon within the same evolution line. And Sand Slash was lower down on its own. So did I did I just forget to mention did I really forget a Lolan Sandshrew? How dare I even consider forgetting the frosty boy himself? A Lolan Sandshrew is this high up. He's going solo. Is better than this evolution? Even better than Ninetales? Nah, it'll get bodied by those two, like. It's pre evolved form, you know, obviously. So, why is it still bodied those two and almost everything else in the rankings here? Okay, now, I'm no qualified optician, but my man, are you blind? Look at him. Look at the boy. Look at this lad and tell me he isn't worthy of the sacred S tier. Santru is already a tidy design in Kanto, but making him an ice type, rounding off his edges a bit, smoothing in the boy out, making him a bit more of a chonker. You could, like, Keep him as a little pet, and he'd also keep all your snacks and drinks cold. Give you a quick little icicle spear for your rum and cokes. That's a good little lad. Slap him on his bald head. That's the only thing, though, I guess. It probably wouldn't be that nice to... Like, you can't really stroke him. It'd be like stroking a frozen lamppost. I wouldn't really be a fan of getting my hand stuck to a bowling ball that weighs more than my fridge. <laughs> Some days, the number one for me is a Lowland Muck. Some days, it's Nine Tails. I was close to it even being Sandshrew. But today, it was almost Cursula. Corsola 2, kind of a package deal here. Corsola getting a regional form was a banger enough. Then they had to spoil us even more and go and give it one of the most creative evolutions going. Imagine looking at Corsola back on your dimly lit Game Boy Color. And imagine that in 20 years, those 20 adorable pixels would become death in a pot. <laughs> Kanto Marowak isn't getting any second looks. Not catching anyone's eye aesthetically, because this appeal is carried purely by a Cubone sob story. The original Cubone has the potential to be either one. So really, all Cubones are destined for a tragic, depressing life. They all go through the same thing. The mother goes on, and the kid takes the helm. Literally. But which path do they go down? Because over in Kanto, 
And that's it. They evolve and go about their lives watching Netflix and chucking bones at cyclists riding past their caves. Until it's finally time to pass on the helm once more. The Alolan ones possessing the bones of its mother, using the spirit of its mother as its flames. Flames that never stop burning once it touches you. S plus tier handily for me. I fluctuate often, but right now I'm feeling that Alolan Marowak is my top regional form and will likely stay within the top three to five after reading into its lore properly. Mm.